world, welcome to another adventure on the Spiritual Playboy. This week, we head to Rodden, Quebec, where we meet up with Gwyneth, one of my dearest teachers. You have met Gwyneth uh, in the past when I visited her garden. She has a special living, breathing garden in the shape of uh, the Flower of Life, which uh, was given to her by the Micmac. We have a intention of building a temple on her land. And in order to do this, we will be expanding the flower of life shape out onto her land to find the perfect place for where this temple should be placed. Okay, so this is the entrance to the avioles, and the reason being is because in the Egyptian calendar, the Sulphic calendar was always aligned with Sirius B. And Sirius B rises on July 23rd, right there. Mm -hmm. So this is in alignment with, which I will never see because of these trees, but that's the alignment goes through there. So as you enter in, you're entering into a three billion year old woman, so you want to introduce your name. You're just not gonna walk into her. <laughs> so say your name out loud. Gwyneth. Say your name, I love you. Johanna. <coughs> Carolyn. So this is the um, first aviole that I ever made. And uh, this is the center of it. You can see that there's six pathways. So an aviol is a hexagram or a circle, depending on how big you're working with it. And I will walk the circle, you stay here, I'll walk the circle so you see how big it is. And an aviol is the same dimension, which we're going to see when we do it on paper, but it's the same dimension as a teepee. Mm. And a teepee would go in this space right over an energy point. This is an energy point. This is where they would put fire in the center of the teepee. And it's considered the breast of the Earth Mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's an energy point. It's walking. So I took one year to do this. You're not allowed to use metal on the land. It's only, earth, uh, only wood or your hands. And I did a lot of exercises with the children indoors all winter long so that the flower of life would be anchored in their cellular memory mm -hmm. before we came out and we did this. So the first thing that has to be done is the energy point, the main energy point has to be ascertained. So that's where this is here. That's why it's set up like that. And then from there you start measuring precise to the millimeter your avules. So if a tribe came on a new piece of land, this would be the first thing they do. Where's the energy point? Then they take a sighting with the North Star. Then the next day they start measuring everything. So the whole lay of the land would have these little picks all over it with colors on them. And then from the lay of the land, from the matrix, they decide. Okay, where are we putting the Guam? Where are we putting fire? Where are we putting the shower? Where are we putting the toilets? It's all working with her so that always when you're in your joy and bliss, as you're showering and you're with water and you're just so happy to be with water because you're hot and dirty, all of that goes right down into an energy point. Mm -hmm. When you're sitting around the fire and you're communing with that fire and you're sending intention to it, all of that is going down to the energy point. Mm -hmm. So your bliss is always feeding her and then she feeds you. This is the center of the second aviole, and where two avioles cross, you have this geometry here called a vesica pisces. See how it goes, like an eye? Mm -hmm. So this is the vulva of the Earth Mother, and you must represent the elements. So anything to do with color is the fire element. So this is a beautiful flower in the spring. On one side you have the water element representing the urethra and on the other side you have compost representing the anus, your power point. Hmm. <laughs> As we have learned. <laughs> and inside all my compost piles are red wigglers. So they are, whenever I go to weed, anything on these triangles goes into that compost. So it's 
and when I go to harvest in the springtime, it's only going in those two triangles. So it's living and breathing this way, and then it's living and breathing with the people in the house, because the kitchen waste and my dry toilet comes into here, and it's always living and breathing. It's in communication. What do they need? How can I provide for them? What, do, what can I provide for her? And then you plant on the side plants that are symbolic of the pubic hairs or the eyelashes. They're on the mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. And this would be the clitoris. These points here that come just out because, well, that's a whole other thing to show you in geometry. But the actual vesica pisces comes from here to here to this point from there to the tomato plant to there. That's the actual <laughs> official geometry of a vesica pisces. This is the language of light and in this place is your one of your most powerful activations happening energetically in the whole garden and it's true for every geometric position. Vesica pisces, the language of light. So when I made these gardens, I didn't have all the information, and I'm sure I still don't, because the Ilnu feed you a little bit at a time, as you stay with them. You have to live with them, eat with them, work with them, play with them, and then gradually they give you little pieces of information. So this was done over many, many, many years. And um, so when I first made the gardens, I devoted it to the Divine Feminine, so in that trinity you have Isis and her flower is the lily. So at the center of all my Vesica Pisces I have some variety of the lily family. These are irises. Now we have tiger lilies, there's day lilies. Then at the center of the aviol of the uh, aviol centers is the rose and that's the flower of Mary Magdalene. And then at the, uh, the third part of the Trinity is Sophia, and her flower is the lotus. So in Quebec we have the ninifar, so that's in the water element. And then you must plant plants that represent the divine feminine, which is the mother energy, the divine masculine, the father energy, and the child energy. So plants that stand erect are the father. Then anything that spirals up or forms a vase, this is the mother energy, the divine feminine, so kale, parsley, tomatoes, peas, beans, this is all the feminine. And then child energy is anything that crawls on the ground that can't be contained and you got to get in your hands and knees to play with it. So, thyme, all your squash family, strawberries, yeah, that's all child energy. The reason uh, Riel helped me to put up these tripods, this height, was I wanted people to have a visual of the energy field. Because in the center what you have is a vortex. And then you have an energy field that goes up to the top, and it goes around like a donut, and mm -hmm. it's circulating this way, and it's circulating this way, the two. And what's really turning it is the worms. The worms mm -hmm. are turning the whole thing. So uh, it's above and it's below. So this is the place I meditate and I send my intention down to the water table to disseminate out into the world. And I never water my garden. So that's another thing. This is a self-sustaining... If I water anything, I would water my compost piles. Because the compost piles are leaching out sideways. And right now it's pretty dry. Uh, Wulni Mas, which we finished at the 2nd of August, is when she reaches her climax. The garden is the highest at that point, giving the most abundance, and that's the celebration of La Mas, is really this point of great abundance and climax. And now her energy is being anchored. She's slowly going down. Your couple piles are going up. She's going down, and she's just radiating bliss. There's a lot more color of fire in nature mm. at this time. Your oranges, your reds, mm. as opposed to spring, you have your pinks and your blues. Mm. I'm going to show you the design, the Flower of Life design, and how the Micmac adapted it so that when we go on the land 
and do the same thing, it'll make sense to you. You'll mm. have a visual before we go there because in the garden you can't see the geometry because mm. of all the plants. The Micmac Nation <laughs> is enormous. It spreads throughout Quebec, uh, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. I'm not sure if they're in PEI. Um, the word Micmac means the people with the memory yeah. and uh, they were once nomadic so they believe that they've come from um, down south and that they are descendants of Atlantis. They so the Inlu, how does it connect to the Inlu? So the Inlu would be the name of the uh, primordial sect of the Micmac tribe who has kept this wisdom alive. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, not an easy way of life to live, I have to say. It's wonderful to go and visit them, but to live primordial life is, is absolutely... What does it mean? It means everything is the most simplest of details and you're in deep communication with the Earth Mother. So you choose, not because you're poor, but you choose to live this life. You choose to live without shoes. You choose to live with the simplest of clothing. You choose to use as little tools as possible because you are in a deeper, deeper connection with the Earth Mother all the time. So imagine your paper as the void. And spirit comes into the void. And spirit says, aha, let's do something together. As soon as spirit sticks its point in the center, we now have an idea. We have, we've moved out of everything and nothingness to something singular, a point. And I asked you to make it for one inch, so stick your point in the center of your page and holding the tip of your compass, <coughs> you're going to make a circle. Keep pressure on the point and just go around making your circle. No. Check this the, compass is the not focus on this woman. Look at that. Eh? This I is am like pure focus. And we're right back. right back. The seed has to divide, yeah. it has to expand. Yeah. So uh, take the same radius as your first circle. That cannot change. The radius of the first circle. Just take the radius of, of your circles. first circle. Mm -hmm. And take, go back around. to your first point now. <laughs> back to the first point. First point on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not on the perimeter. I can see it. Put it right on the perimeter. Okay. And make another circle. Make another circle. Booyakasha. So now the first cell has become two cells. Yes. Keep going. From on, where? On every six on. points, make a circle. But go in progression so you don't lose yourself. You should have three circles, so the cell is divided into three. Then the cell divides into four. I say three. So if spirit is creating with void and they've just created the first seven rotations of cell division. This is now called the seed of life. And if I was, we're seeing it on two-dimensional form, but if we were to see it on three-dimensional form with globes, it's actually also called the egg of life. It is both the seed and the egg at the same time. This is called the seed of life, and if we were to do the flower of life, and actually, if I was to make a circle around all of this, I would do it only once which is what mm. I've done in the garden. There's only one line around this whole circle, one line. But if I was to expand this now, like we talked about the second quality of the tree, its ability to expand, I would take my point of my compass and I would go here. On the outer rims. On the outer rims, but well, the the you would the see that as soon as you start to make, here I'll just do one on her page so you can see it. See how I cut the outside circles? Mm -hmm. 
So the flower of life, I have to take these outside points. Mm. But they're also, when every time I make them, they're going to cut these outside circles. So I also have to make a circle on those cuts. All the cuts. So All double the them cuts. Number of yeah. cuts yeah. To make the flower. And then, on the flower of life, we have a double membrane. Okay. So every living thing on the planet uses this geometry to, for cellular division in order mm -hmm. to grow. And we could also use this same idea in uh, growing businesses. Because if you want to expand a business, you have to have a certain amount of support. So how many petals are in the center? Right, so mm. true. In geometry, we have some basic principles. The circle is always the feminine. The line is always the masculine. Now, if you look at this pattern, your eyes can go really buggy for a while, yeah, try and work with it. it you, you're, you're trying to figure out where's the starting point, yeah. so on and so forth. So this is a complicated one to keep in your, hold in your memory, particularly as our magnetic shift changed. Mm. And after Lemuria, we went to the left side of the brain, our logical side, and our logical side has a hard time dealing with this. The circle is the right side of the brain, the line, the square, the cube is the left side of the brain. Mm -hmm. So what the Micmac did to hold the memory is they adapted it a little bit. You, so you see how geometry is like, is really about sex? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't think, you know, everybody kept emailing me, what is this about like sex is, has nothing to do with geometry, mm -hmm. it has everything to do with geometry. Hmm. because there are certain ways to work with it. So, this is the design when it's finished, and I just wanted to correct this one thing, because as I'm saying to you, the Vesica Pisces are these petals. They're not really. The Vesica Pisces is this geometry. It goes outside of the petal. It has particular measurements to it. And there's certain things that we have to plant there when we're doing it. But um, again, related to the vulva, because you plant your most beautiful smelling plants on these corners. Mm. Yeah. So when you're in this area, you're smelling the, the beauty. What we're going to do, we already have the vortex, and we already have this point. We're going to take this design and move it out this way. And we're going to trace this design out on the land, moving it to a location that I would like to put a teepee on, mm -hmm. so that we find the exact same geometry in this place. So if we were to erect a wigwam, that's where it would be. We would be working with her. It would be right on an erogenous zone. This is the perimeter of our circle. That's the best we can get. So you put a red one here. Red will be for the outside of the perimeter, and blue will be for the center of each aviole. You guys are so missing out watching Gwyneth. <laughs> run this land, run this show. So now using the seed of life, flower of life, sacred geometry, we are tracking into the forest to see where would be the perfect center for uh, a TP wigwam. Uh, what did you call it? Uh, what are we building? A wigwam? A heart temple. It's a heart temple. Now we are going to trace the perimeter and see what this looks like. It's quite exciting, it's a multi-year project. Okay, well I'm really grateful to all the people who came today. It was really a lot of fun for me, I hope it was for them. I know it's hard to go back into your childhood trauma of geometry and mathematics, <laughs> <laughs> but I think you all had fun in the end once you got into it. There was a certain calm at the table once you finally got it, mm -hmm. and uh, that's really fun to see how that plays out on the land and the relationship with her when you do it. So, um, yeah, just closing to say 
thank you for coming. Toronto and Montreal. Let's start something together. Let's <laughs> hope that this energy point plays itself out. So there you have it. Some beautiful wisdom handed down from tradition to tradition and now in the hands and minds of the Ista tribe in the Northeast, Canada, and now out to you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and remember, let love free. It's the only way we'll ever change anything. <laughs>